Hello, good morning, BBC Houston. It's good to see you this morning in the house of the Lord. Would you rise to your feet as we open up in a word of prayer? If you're tuning online, we welcome you this morning, wherever it is that you're at. Would you join us in worship? God, we thank you this morning as we're here gathered, Father, here in this house, across the world. God, just to give you praise because you are so worthy of it. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord, and we just want to say thank you, thank you, Lord. We love you, Father, for all this is in your name that we pray. Amen.
worship a king who is worthy, who the glory, honor, and power belongs to. God, we thank you this morning that we get to lift our burdens to you. That we get to have joy in all that you've given us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that there's beauty, Lord God, that surround us. God, as that we are in your presence, Father, that's where we belong. And that's where we long to be over and over again, Lord. That your fire would fall fresh upon us, Lord, again and again. We worship you in Jesus' name. Bless our time together, and as we approach the table, I want to remind each and every one of us that we have to have a good understanding of the bread in the Lord's Supper and understand of the cup of the Lord's Supper. The scripture tells us in First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-seven. Then it says who the twenty-four who himself bore our sin in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, and by whose stripe you are healed. The bread that we are about to receive is a symbolic presentation of the body of Christ that have been broken so we can be restored, we can be healed. First, He bore our sin on His body on the tree, that we have died to sin, may live for righteousness. The body of Christ have been nailed to the tree so we can be forgiven and by the strife that He have received on His back that we have been healed. And that's a blessing that we can receive every time that we take communion, understand what the bread represents. And then the cup, we have understand the cup. The, the Bible tells us that um, as a believer, um, we know that the cup of the Lord's Supper is the um, stand for the blood of Jesus, have shed for the forgiveness of our sin and have shed so we can be restored. Everything that is lost because of Adam and Eve sin in the garden by the blood of Jesus, He has shed seven times, seven different places from the garden of Gethsemane to the time that He went out to the cross. And the last Thing is when the soldier take the spear and peer through his heart. The scripture tells us that water and blood gush out from there. The benefit of the blood of Jesus is to restore thing that is up in under the curse because of sin. Now we no longer in Christ Jesus no longer under any curse in life that we can be restored and everything that God has intended for us to live the life of happiness and blessing. Everything is provided for when Jesus give up his bread, his, his body and his blood for us. So the bread and the cup is, is speak the whole uh, salvation and redemption that the Lord go through for us. At this time, would you stand with me as we prepare our heart to come to receive the bread and the cup? Because of all His blessing come to us, we now prepare our heart and with a heart of gratitude, say a word of thanksgiving to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and say thank you for your love and your grace. Father, we thank you that as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, you have spoke the word of salvation, that you will come as a human being to have a body, to be a sacrifice to restore mankind. Thank you, Lord. And you crush the heels of the devil, the head of the devil. It's have bitten your feet, and we grateful that you go through all of that for us. So our sin can be forgiven, and our life can be restored. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love and your grace that we are who we are today in you because of your sacrificial love. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, take the bread, break it, and say, this is my body. I have been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you take the bread and Remember the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sin. And in the same manner, check the cup. After give thanks, tell the disciple, take it and drink it. Every time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. You take the cup and understand this represents the blood that Jesus have shed to the last drop for us. Would you take the cup? But may benefit of the body and the blood of Jesus begin to flow in our body bring healing and restoration and Lord the benefit of the blood will take full effect in each and every one life in this place anything is under curse we declare it's be broken in the name of Jesus. Anything under curse from the ground that we stand to the thing that we have ownership of, we ask that you apply the blood that have shed from Jesus' body and break it, Lord. We declare by your love and your grace, we are free and free indeed. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Amen, church. And on a Sunday like this, we are just reminded about Christ's sacrifice on the cross, we can't help but be in a position to just worship God for everything that he has done for us. As Pastor mentioned, just to be able to receive the benefits of his blood, that salvation that we have, that leads us to be able to have that intimate relationship with God, to be able to spend that quiet time with God every morning, that one-on-one unique special relationship with our Heavenly Father, that is an amazing thing. But on top of that, we can step into what God has for our lives as far as the redemptive purpose that he has for us to walk in fulfillment, to us, for us to be able to have our healing, to have our peace, to have victory over the things that shackle us. 
And so this morning, let us continue to worship God this morning through our giving and our offering. And praise God that we can just wake up on this morning to just worship our Heavenly Father. If you would like to worship through giving this morning, you can do so by either putting your offering or tithing in the envelope located in the seat in front of you, or you can get on your smartphone and just go to vbchouston.com. And on that screen, on that webpage, in the upper right-hand corner is a red Give button. You can click on that, and it will lead you to be able to uh, give through push pay. And if you are putting your offering in the envelope, please re be reminded, just hold on to it until at the end of service. At that point, you can put it in the bucket in the back uh, near the doors. So praise God for that. And once again, we just are grateful that we can all come together to worship God. And this through your generous and faithful giving that we are able to continue to share the vision of VBC Houston that God has given us for people to love God, love people, discover purpose, and change the world. And together, we can change the world for Jesus Christ. And you know, God wants us to be able to preach and share the good news with everyone that we encounter. So with that, let us bow our heads at this time as we give this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, God, we come with a heart, a giant heart of worship, God, for you, God. We just seek you in every single area of our lives, God, and we just worship you on this Sunday morning, this beautiful Sunday morning. This is the day that you have given us. We simply just rejoice and we are glad in it, God. We are glad that we have this relationship with you. And God, we worship you, God, through our giving and our offering. We ask, God, that you will bless the tithing and the offering that's being collected right now, God. May it be used, God, to expand your kingdom, God, to move your kingdom forward, God. May the name and the gospel of Jesus Christ, what you did for us on the cross, Lord Jesus, be spread and shared with every person around the world, God. We thank you, God. And you have given us a great platform here at VBC Houston where you use all of us, God, to be your hands and feet. We give you all the praise, all the glory, God. And Lord, we pray for every person here and every person watching online, God, that you will be their way maker, God. And whatever thing that they are seeking you for, God, we praise you in advance, God, for all the praise reports, God, for just your miraculous working hands, God, in our lives, God, for our healing, our deliverance, God our provision in our finances, God. We thank you, God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen, amen. We have a few announcements to go over before we invite Pastor Sam to share the message this morning. If you are here with small children from the ages of nursery age to the sixth grade at this time, our children's ministry, VBC Kids, is taking place on the other side in our COC. So at this time, you can kindly walk your child over to the other side where we have a dream team member that will check your child in as they will enter in a time of worshiping God and then the Bible study. Second announcement is that after service this morning, please join us in the lawn area. We will have a time of breakfast and fellowship. So it'll be great to just step outside in the wonderful weather that God has given us this morning and just you know fellowship with one another. Save the date for this, or actually friendly reminder, May the 8th, which is next Sunday, is Mother's Day. And so uh, we will have a Mother's Day service here uh, next Sunday. And so it'll be a great time to honor and celebrate our mothers and also our mother figures, those in our lives who help nurture us, teach us, support for us, and pray for us. So it'll be a great uh, time to just invite your mothers and mother figures to join us next Sunday, May the 8th, as we will celebrate with our moms. And after um, English service, we will have a time in the COC where we will have uh, muffins with mom. And then this will be a great time to just celebrate our moms. We will have food and photo uh, opportunities. So it will be a great time to celebrate with everyone over there. And we just want to remind all the ladies, if you have your tea time hats, to please wear that so that we can just celebrate our moms and take pictures with our moms. Amen. Uh, save the dates here of May the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. We will be once again offering our growth track classes. These growth track classes are designed to help us uh, discover the redemptive purpose that God has given for all of us and for us to be able to walk in everything that God has for us. And so these classes will take place at 1130 in the morning, beginning May 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. So please sign up for that if you would like, and you can sign up by going to, or actually sending us an email to info at vbchouston.com, and we'll get you signed up. And it'll be a great time to just begin taking these classes and just sharing what God has for all of us. Amen. So with that, at this time, 
let us give a very, very warm welcome to Pastor Sam as he shares the message this morning. Amen. Good morning, church. It's really good to be here this morning, and I'm so happy about the word that I get to share uh, this morning because it's really, it's been really close to my heart for the last, I would say, three weeks. And it's a scripture that I've been able to really marinate on and really understand on a deeper level. And I had the opportunity to share this exact message, this exact scripture, this exact reminder from the Bible uh, to a small group that I, I, I've been speaking to on Wednesdays. But before we even get started, if you guys can, I would love for us to do this. Can you just stand to your feet? Find somebody that you haven't said hello to this morning. Go and say hello to them, and I challenge you this. Maybe move from the seat you're sitting in and sit next to them. So stand to your feet and go and say hello to someone. Give them a hug. Give them, you know, a handshake or whatever, and just say hello to them this morning. It's good to just change things up a little bit. It's so good to be here at church this morning, and I hope that you guys are excited and ready to be uh, in the house of God today. Great. Once everybody gets to their seat, I would love to just start out with a word of prayer. And if we can, let's just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much this morning. Oh, you're so good. And God, that it still is fresh on our heart of the reminder that we all were able to have of what you've done for us on the cross. And God, it's not something that's just a holiday that has blown over, Lord, but it's something that we are constantly in reminder of. God, that you loved us that much. God, that you love us that much. That you had a plan for us even before you, even before we even accepted you, you had a plan for us already. That we are already accepted in your eyes and in your heart. That yes, Lord, even though we make mistakes, God, your love is so good that you're accepting of us through all. And God, I thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made, sending your one and only son, the, the, the perfect sacrifice that could be for us, Lord. God, that you gave his life up for us. And I thank you, Lord, for the example of Jesus that you have given us, that we can see how he lived a life full of power and authority, full of love and compassion. And I thank you for that example, Lord, because now we know how we should live in this world. Now we know how we should be in this world. Now we know how to be a light in this world. Lord, I thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, I hope that that time of worship was just refreshing to you. I hope that time of worship, you were able to get what you needed. And, and I've said this before, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. Maybe, maybe you woke up this morning, and it was really hard to get to church. Maybe you woke up this morning, and you actually came into the house of the Lord broken. Maybe your heart is not in that place where you thought it would be. Maybe, maybe something's going on at home. But one thing that I can guarantee you is if you can get into God's presence, if you can allow your heart to be in God's presence, if you can allow your life to be in God's presence, that's where things begin to change. I, I promise you not, if you came into this church today and your heart is in a place where you don't feel God's presence, something amazing that you could do is just ask him, Lord, I need you here right now, and he'll be right there for you. Lord, I need you to be with me right now, and he'll be right there for you. Maybe you're on the opposite end and you came here excited, ready on fire, and God's been doing things throughout the entire week for you. I hope that your heart is ready to learn even more. I hope that your heart is ready to receive even more. And for every single one of us in this room, I hope that you're ready to leave this place transformed, changed, renewed. See, something that I really have been learning over and over, something that God's really been teaching me over and over, is there's not a single Sunday that should be the same. There's not a single Sunday service that should be the same. There shouldn't be a single certain Sunday service that you should go to and you should walk out and be like, wow, I didn't learn a single thing. Or God didn't change anything in my life today. But the thing about Sunday service or the thing about learning in service or the thing about receiving in services is what is it to you? What value does the things that God has to say weigh on your heart? What value or, or what does this time of, of fellowship or what does this time of encouragement do for your life? Or do you see it as a waste of time? Or do you see it as something that, ah, uh, it's just another Sunday. Ah, uh, it's just another Sunday. It's funny because 
we just had Easter. And I spoke to a lot of the students and I told them this and said, well, is it just another Easter to you? What makes this Easter different than the other weeks, than the other months, than the other Sunday services? Yes, it's a week that we are reminded. It is a time that we celebrate our living God. But something that I, I wanted to grasp this Easter was this, is that the life that I live now, the life that we live now, after knowing all that we have learned many years, of however many years that you have been a Christian, what changes now? Where's the understanding now? Where's the bit of, where's the bit of change that happens in your life now? Well, I'll tell you this, something that has changed in my life is this, is that even more, it's been pushed on my heart, and I know that God's putting it on my heart to share to people even more that what resurrection power actually is and, and the forgiveness that we actually have and the things that we actually receive from our, our Heavenly Father making a sacrifice for us. I think that a lot of us have gotten to that place where we've been believers for a long time now, or maybe some of us have just became believers but we're even to the point where it's just like, oh yeah, that's just another thing that Jesus did. It's not just another thing Jesus did. It is the thing that Jesus did. It's the thing that he has done for us, and that's the greatest thing about it, is that's what his life was. It was a sacrifice for us. It was an act of love for us. It was a showing of God's grace for us. It was a showing of God's yearning or wanting a relationship with us. That's what Jesus' life was. Last week, Pastor Khan shared, shared a great message, and there was two things that stuck with me all week. I thought about it every single time I, I, I had a chance to just, you know, reflect on what's happening on the day. It's know your worth and know your value in Christ. See, a lot of us know our worth and our value because we're like, oh, that's me. That's who I am. I deserve this. I deserve that. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about knowing your worth and value in Christ. Knowing who you are in Jesus' name. Knowing who you are in the eyes of Christ. Knowing the things that you can do and say now that you have God in your heart. There's a big difference. And I can't wait to share that with you guys today. And there's also a reminder that we, we see in the Bible. There's a reminder that we see that all of us have to understand. That yes, we make mistakes. But how do you move forward? Yes, we had another Easter service, but what does that mean to you today? If you guys can, open up your Bibles with me. I would love to read from Philippians 3, verses 17 to 12. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. It says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteousness through the faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with him depends on faith. I want to know, and this is the important part, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing his, in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. And verse 12, one of my favorite parts is, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. This scripture speaks volumes to me, and I know that it speaks to a group of students in this room. Because in Bible study, we went really deep with this scripture. In Bible study, we went really in depth with it to the point where it has stuck with a lot of us. And if I may say, all of us. And it's a reminder to us in this room that, yeah, you may not have it together. Yeah, we know that. Maybe some of you don't know that. Maybe some of you think that you're still in this place where you're stuck, and you're the only one that's in trouble, and you're the only one that's going through these things. But that's not true. Every single one of us are going through something, but what's the point of not understanding what Jesus did on the cross for you? You're forgiven. I know you make mistakes. You're forgiven. I know you feel like you're not worthy, but you are. I know you feel like you're not loved, but he cares for you and you are. That's the example that we have been shown on Easter. And the fact of the matter is this, is it's not just another Easter. And don't let it be just another Sunday. Let it be a day where there's a reminder in your heart so that you can press forward towards the goal that you have. Not just to get from Sunday to Sunday, 
but to make a difference every single day that you're able to live on this earth, to use your life, to use your words, to speak life into others, to be that example of Christ, to be a a, a believer that has resurrection power inside of them. Why? Because that's where Christ is now, inside of us. The first point that I have, and I want to move straight forward, is this, is knowing the power of Jesus' name. Do you understand the power that comes behind his name now or the power when his name is said because he's conquered death? Do you understand that weight that you can use his name in times of trouble or you can say his name in times of need and it changes all things? One of the things that I'm reminded by, and it's crazy because I've been going on vacation and I've been meeting new people in my life and things have been changing all around. And it's, it's crazy because when, when you know someone, that is someone, it, it's, it's a pretty big deal. And it's funny because I went on vacation, and it's like, if you're a celebrity or if you know someone, like, the doors are open for you. Anything you want, it, it, oh yeah, you can have that. Oh yeah, that's for you, that, yeah, that's fine. And it's funny, on, on, a, on a smaller scale of it, I, I kind of felt on that level a little bit where I, I picked up a, a, a new job that God opened the opportunity for. And yes, I told you guys, I was into bowling, and I got into bowling, and then I showed them, I, I said, you know what, y'all don't have anything social media related. Do you mind if I help y'all with that? Can I, can I help you in any way? Can I take pictures or videos to help promote your business in any way? And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. We would like to do that. And as I was able to be a part of this group, I got to know the owner. Oh man, the owner, he, he's a big deal. He's a professional bowler. He played, all, he played for half of his life ever since he was, uh, got out of high school. And he was signed and everything, and, and he's got sponsors and all these kind of things. And, 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 he, and people said that he's had a shop there for 12 years, but before the 12 years he's had a shop in Houston, he's had a shop outside of it. He's had a shop in a different state. And I got to know him on a deeper level, and I got to know him on, on almost on a respectable level, where when I was taking a step back and letting him do his job and watching people interact with him, everyone knows who BV is. And it's crazy because if you just say his name, people are like, oh, yeah, I know who he is. Oh, yeah, and and all these kind of things. And it's crazy because the moment that I I decided to say, you know, I would love to be a part of this team. You know, what can we do and and all these things. and, and, And there's one thing that he said to me. He said, Sam, when you sign this contract, you're family. You're a part of this team. I was like, what? Like, okay. I said, look, that's one of the biggest things for me. I said, I would rather take, I would rather lose a contract, then lose this friendship that we have. And he goes, I, I understand that 100%, but you're family now. And the moment he said that, I, I was like, man, like, what, what does this mean? And he said, well, you got to look the par now. So he kitted me out with all the gear that I needed, all the brand new things I could ask for. I said, but how much do I owe you? Don't worry about it. I said, nah, the bill's going to come later. No, don't worry about it. Brand new everything, every single thing I could ask for, brand new. And every time, I, every time someone comes in that's a somebody, he goes, hey, have you met Sam yet? This is Sam. Let me introduce you. Th- he's a part of our team now. This is what he does. I kid you not, every single person that walks in that, that is somebody to him, he says, hey, hold, hold on, wait a second. This is Sam. I don't know if you met him yet, but this is what he does for me. And I felt like, wow, what an honor that, like, he's introducing me to every single person that means something to him. And then I thought to myself, well, what an honor it is for us to be in the kingdom to say, I'm a child of God. Everywhere that you go, if you don't have that understanding of your worth in Christ and who he is to us and who he actually is to this world, the world bows down to him. The, 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 when you cry out to his name, people open up their ears because he's a big deal. Why do you think that he actually has his own holiday? It's Easter. People know what happens on Easter. The the bunnies may try to, you know, compare themselves to Jesus, but there's no way. There's no way that people may try to make up whatever holiday it is to them, but there's no way. Because for years, for years, it's been his day. And that's who he is. Here's the thing about understanding the weight behind his name. You've got to understand that if you say the name Jesus, things open. If you say the name Jesus, things move in this world. You've got to understand that if you can call on his name, there's a big deal because the moment you call on his name, demon flees. All the demons run and scatter because they know what happens when his name is said. They can't stand it. 
See, here's the thing about understanding the weight of Jesus' name. Do you understand that not only is he a champ, the champion, but we are on his team, so we are champions also. The enemy wants you to, and Pastor Khan said this is the best. He heard it from Reinhard Bonnke, that the enemy is trying to hammer away the face or the image of God in our lives so that we can look nothing like him. Because every time he sees us, we're a resemblance of what beat him. And he's trying to hammer it away. You can't look like Christ. No. I, every time I look at you, it, it, makes me, it makes me angry. Well, that's what it does because he's been defeated. Do you have that understanding of who Jesus is in your life and what he can do for you? Do you have that confidence and boldness knowing that, yeah, I am a Christian. I'm not afraid to say it. I am a Christian. I do believe in Christ. I'll tell you this. It's one of the most challenging things to, it's one of the most challenging things to live life without having confidence, to be honest. It's really challenging. Why? Because you, you feel like, well, I'm nobody. And nobody wants to really talk to me. Or nobody wants to be a part of this, uh, be a friend with me. Or uh, he can do it, but I can't do it. Or she can do it, but I couldn't do it. But you got to have that confidence knowing that our Lord and Savior has created us all. And if we have his DNA in our life, the things that he can do, so can we. The things that he has said that we can do, you can do. And it's that confidence that you have, that you have to believe that you are a child of God. That you are a child and you do belong. And that you have forgiveness and you actually have love from him. You have boldness from him. You ask me, and I'll tell you this. Well, what's the point of talking about resurrection power? We hear it after every Easter service. It's funny because Pastor Khan actually said, somebody said that. Another resurrection message? And then they sat and listened to it, and they're like, man, I never heard it that way. I got wrecked. And they were crying from the beginning of the message to the end. And the thing about it is there's such power behind understanding what actually happened. It's like this. It's like the old times of, uh, of when, 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 let's say, somebody was able to, to conquer a part of land or whatever. They boast about it. They talk about it. They're, this is them. This is, the, this is what they did. But I don't really hear many of us boasting and talking about how good our God is. The testimonies that should be flowing out of our, our, our mouths. The, the, the things that we should be just flowing out of our hearts is our God is good. He's done this for us. He's done this for you. He's done this, this, this not just for myself because I choose to be a believer, but he actually did it for everybody. And the importance about that is that's actually how you should walk around telling people about who God is. You should say, no, he doesn't just actually love me. The relationship that I have with him isn't just for me. It's actually for all of us. And, and one of the things that, that I want to share about the weight of his name or knowing the power of his name, last week, I was, I, was, I, was leaving, uh, I was leaving Sunday school, and I was walking to my office. And I walked back from my office out to the foyer just to see who's, who's here left at church. And then somebody came up to me. They're like, hey, pastor, pastor, pastor. And I was like, hey, how's it going? They're like, I have somebody that I, I brought them to Christ on, on Easter. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And, and they said, but I would like for you to pray for them. I was like, oh, yeah, let me know their name. Like, I'll pray for them during my quiet time. It's all good. And she said, oh, yeah, his name is so-and-so. Um, I'm going to call him right now so you can pray for him. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, like right then, right then and there, like right on the spot. I was like, let me, let, me, let me get my mind together, my thoughts together. I'm trying to run to a meeting. And then I remember Pastor Khan's message. Know your worth and know your value in Christ. And know that you can declare his name. And she said, he had a stroke. And parts of his body are not functioning well. Can you pray for him? And, and without hesitation... I, rem I reminded myself in that moment, standing right inside the foyer, I said, you better have boldness because you serve a good God. Have boldness, Sam. And I had to tell myself that because you can't let fear take over things that you, you already know. If you know that your God is good, don't have fear when people try to tell you otherwise. No, my God is good. Have that kind of confidence. She, she calls him on the phone. I pick up the phone and I ask him, hey, how's it going? This is so-and-so. What's your name? You know, so-and-so told me your story. Can I pray for you? And that person was like, oh, yeah, sure. I, yeah, I would love for you to pray for me. I prayed for them. I said, in the name of Jesus, I, and I just started declaring healing, healing over their life. And, and I said, Lord, I know what you can do. Show this person what you can do right now, Lord. Show them. And then I, I said, Lord, I believe it. I declare it in your powerful name. 
so-and-so be healed in Jesus' name. And he said, you know, he said, right after I said amen, he goes, Pastor, thank you so much. And I said, no, 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 we're not leaving. We're not done. He goes, uh, what? What do you mean? I said, well, how do we know if God works if you don't even test or try anything? He said, oh, okay. And, he said, and I said, move the body parts that, that don't really move that well because of the stroke. And I kid you not, his voice turned to almost like confusion. He was like, it's lighter. Like, I can move my arm. It's lighter. And I was like, yeah. I said, but is, he's not done yet. Let's continue to pray. I said, okay, okay, let's pray. And I prayed for him one more time. And, and I heard a different change in his voice. He said, Pastor, it's cha- something's changing. It, it's easier now. It's easier to move. And I said, I can't wait to see you at church. I believe that your healing is going to come completely. And I said that only because I knew that, that lady was, the, the lady that was at church was waiting for Pastor Khan in the front to get Pastor Khan to pray too. So I know for a fact that God's doing his work in this man's life. But here's the thing. When it comes to praying for people, my question is this. Do you understand the weight that Jesus' name carries? That even sickness has to be healed. That even demon-possessed people can be free. That even people who are going through things in their life that need a breakthrough, that only God could bring a breakthrough in their life. Do you understand that? It can't just be another Easter calendar year where you go past and you don't understand what significance happened or it's maybe your 10th or 20th Easter that you've been to. But is there a life change in you after you heard the good news? Is there a life change in you after you've heard that your God has actually won and is still sitting on the throne? Is there a life change in your life? Do you walk around with boldness? Are you a believer who understands the weight of your Father's name? Do you understand that you can walk and talk just like he did or just like he does? Do you understand that you can talk to people about freedom and actually pray for them and they can receive freedom because his name carries that kind of weight that will break through all the things that they're going through? It's incredible. It's incredible. And you know, one of the things that happened last week, I I, I told the Sunday school, we were sitting in class and I said, let's put it to the test. I said, if you guys believe what I'm believing right now and we know our value and we know our worth, I said, we have a friend in our church right now, someone who's y'all's leader also. I said, Ahn's, Ahn's parents and family is here today, but they aren't believers. But can you believe and can you put all your faith in God that God can move in their lives today? And we all just stopped and we prayed in Sunday school. And I asked, I asked Ahn, I said, hey, Ahn, like, how did your parents like it? And he said, he said to me, you know what? My mom, she smiled at me really big and she gave me a hug and she said, you're, you're a Christian now, aren't you? I can see that you are. I can see that you, you, you're, you're different. And when, she, when Ann told me that story, and when I saw just that impact that even the life change that he has impacted his mom who he's been praying for, that's only with the understanding of knowing that your life can't be the same after knowing the truth. We can't carry on in life the same, knowing the truth. You've got to have boldness. You've got to have faith to believe. And you've got to rock around with confidence, knowing the God that we serve. See, one thing that that really gets to us sometimes is this, and it's exactly what we read in, in Philippians. But I don't have it together. Pastor, you don't understand. I make mistakes regularly. So do I. No, 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 you don't understand. Like, 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 it's hard for me to talk to God. It's hard for me to read the Bible. But are you here today? Are you watching online? There's something inside of you that's yearning to have that relationship and that connection with God. And what is it? Because you know what it's like to understand the truth. You know what it's like to have an understanding of who our Lord and Savior is. And it's true. When you have something good in your life and you haven't had it before, you start to crave it again. You miss it. And it's one of these things that I want to remind you is this is, is you've got to move past your mistakes and move towards the goal. I want to read that scripture one more time to you, and it's just in verse 12. Is, I don't mean to say that I already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. But I press on to possess the perfection on which Christ Jesus first possessed me. 
Yeah, I make mistakes. Yeah, I, I don't have it all together. But you know what? I'm pushing forward. I'm not allowing the enemy to hold me back. I'm pushing forward. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward and understanding that there's grace and there's forgiveness in my life. I'm moving forward. Do, do you think that, that Jesus only forgave you just that one time on the cross, and if you made a mistake after that, like you're done for, like it was your one chance and that was it? What kind of loving God is that? He loves and forgives us on a daily. He loves, and for, that's the loving parent that he is. I, I, it was funny because I remember, you know, on, on Good Friday, I was preaching the message, and Pastor Khan, my, my father, was translating. And I got to the point where I said, I would never, ever want to hear my father say, man, I'm disappointed in you. And the funny thing is, I was like, can you translate that? And he was like, I, I, he didn't really know the words to really put together saying disappointed or disappointment in, in a child. And I kind of laughed and chuckled because I was like, he's never said it out of his mouth before either. And it's one of those things where your father in heaven has never said that either that he's always loved you, he's always forgiven you, and that you have that chance. And you have that understanding now that, you know, there was a law that you had to try to meet the requirements of. But God knew that we couldn't do that. He knows. And I think that this message right here or this particular part is for somebody in this room. Because someone in this room is saying to, to, to themselves right now, yeah, but I'm not perfect, and I don't have it together. All these stories about testimonies and praying for people, I don't even dare to do that because I don't think I'm worthy of it. Well, that's just a lie from the enemy. And I want to tell you that that's, that's definitely a lie from the enemy. And how do I know that? It's exactly what Pastor Khan shared last week. You got to know your value and your worth in Christ. Who are you in Jesus' eyes? Who are you in this new life that you get to live? You're not the same person that you used to be. You're somebody new. You're forgiven. You're transformed. My title of my message today was actually Resurrection Transformation. And it was crazy because, you know what, <laughs> and it's funny. I thought it was really funny, actually. I put this message together, and I, and, and I, looked, at it, I looked at my wife yesterday, and we were talking, and she said, she said, you're not, you're not going to look over your message anymore? I said, it's crazy because what God wants me to teach about, I've been literally learning about for the last three weeks on my own and also teaching the uh, small group. It was like, I know it in my heart. Like, I know this scripture in my heart. I've been saying it to myself over and over. Push towards the goal, Sam. Push towards the goal. Push towards God. Push towards God. Push towards that moment when you're going to be able to walk and see him. Push towards that goal. Push towards that goal. Man, I worked on this message really hard. Like, really hard. And I thought I sent myself the email, and I didn't. I went to the back, and I was getting my iPad ready, pulling up Gmail, and I was like, dude, the Wi-Fi is not working at church, probably, like, you know, and so I refreshed, and everything was refreshing, but my message wasn't showing there, and I was like, where's my message? I was freaking out, where's my message? Where's my message? And I was walking back and forth, like a chicken with his head cut off, walking back and forth, where's my message? Where's the scriptures? And I really felt the Holy Spirit say, don't you know this stuff already? Are you transformed enough to the point where you can talk in boldness about what it is that you're living out right now? Do you know this? I was like, yeah, I do. So why are you scared? Go up there and speak about me and tell people the transformed life that you live now. I was like, I got it, let's go. And I think sometimes we get to that point where we kind of psych ourselves out. I don't have everything together. How am I gonna pray for my coworker? I, I didn't even write out my prayer yet. You hear yourself? You didn't write out a prayer? Say it from your heart. You know that God loves the person in front of you. Tell them that. You don't have to write that down. I don't, I don't have it together, though. Like, how, how do I share my testimony? I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what to say. I don't have it. I made a mistake. I, I, I don't know. I haven't read my Bible today. How can I share about God? But you, but you know in your heart what it's like to have a transformed life now. So you can share with the person across from you or who you've been praying for that God loves them, that God loves you, and you, you made mistakes, too, and you don't have it all together, but you have this new life that you get to live transformed and renewed. Why? Because... Our God is loving and caring, and he understands that we don't have it all together. That's actually the entire reason why he died on the cross and made his sacrifices. He knew we couldn't get it together. He knew we couldn't have it together, but you know what? He said, I'm not going to stop that from having a relationship with my children. I'm going to have the best plan of all. And it's revealed to us the best plan of all. The sacrifice that was made that none of us in this room could have made to cover the 
sins of the entire world, but only one person could. But does that weight of his name hold that much in your life? We're telling your friends or your coworkers or, or even having the boldness to, to invite, like on, even having the boldness to invite your parents that don't believe in God, but to have them sit in church. And do you have that boldness to share to your coworkers or, or let them know, or don't shy away, but let them know, yeah, I'm a Christian. That moment came up, that moment came up in, 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 uh, in my life this past week. I said, hey, so Sam, what, what days can you work and what days can't you work? I said, you better, in my, in my heart, I said, you better, Sam, you better tell them exactly why you can't come to church or, or go to work on Sundays. I said, guys, I, I just want to let you guys know now, I'm actually a pastor at my church, and I uh, can't make it to work on Sundays. He goes, that's really good to hear you say that. We don't even open on Sundays, so enjoy. I had the bonus to just say it. I let it out there, and I just said it. I, hadn't, I had confidence, and I just said it. Hey, I'm a pastor. They said, oh, man, that's awesome. Don't worry. We don't even work on Sundays, so you can have Sunday off anyways. And we just, we just both laughed. But the crazy thing is this is why shy away from the things that we should be bold about? What were you doing on Sunday? I went to church. Just be bold about it. I went to church. Oh, that's good. Here's the thing. When you're bold about what it is that you believe in, Nobody's going to doubt you or say anything. Just be bold about it. What did you do on Sunday? I went to church. You want to come with me next week? Just be bold about it. Why be scared about it? All of us can have the confidence in the world to say everything else that we did, but when it comes to God, why do we feel like we shy away? And I think that it's at that point where maybe we are getting to that point where we're learning our value, we're learning our worth in Christ, but guess what? Today you should just know you're valuable in God's eyes. You really are. And every time you talk about him or every time you boast about him, it makes him proud. What parent doesn't want to be boasted about? What parent doesn't want to hear like, man, my dad's really awesome. My mom, she's a wonderful cook. They want to hear those things. And so does our heavenly father. I have an awesome, like, I love God with all my heart. And I love having this relationship that I have with him. And have that boldness and that confidence. Here's the thing. Many people in this world are looking for a change in their life. They're looking for something that can be different in their life. And a lot of us could be that bridge for them to have a difference in their life if we would just understand our worth and value in Christ. When you understand that that when you start to speak about his name, and I told you there's that VIP access, on this earth, when we start to speak or declare his name, doors open. And even when you start to talk to people, doors open in their lives. They start to to hear these things. Man, I've, I've had conversations with people, and it was crazy. Just recently in my life, I would share to people, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a new people that I meet. Oh, I'm a pastor, and all these things. And all of a sudden, they just start confessing their, their story to me, and I'm like, hey man, it's all good. You know, like they just, just start spewing their guts out, hey, it's all good. You know, like don't worry, you know, we, we can talk about it, but you don't have to feel, it's okay. Because my thing is this, is I know that they don't know Jesus yet, but the more that they get to know me, and the more bold that I am about Jesus, they'll get to know him. And it's through my life. And here's the thing. I know that a lot of us have this challenge. Maybe it's just talking about God at work. And we may say like, oh man, like it's a touchy subject to talk about God at work because I don't know how people are going to feel. I don't know what it's going to be like. It's, it's really awesome, you know, and and. Jeannie and I are on this new journey with our new jobs and things that we're trying out. But we spend time together in in the middle of our day. We try to have lunch every day with each other and just kind of decompress, but also encourage each other for the rest of the day. You know, take a short break in the middle of the day, talk to each other, pray for one another, or encourage each other. And she shared something with me that really encouraged me. She said, hey, I I didn't get a chance to tell you, but it was pretty awesome. I, I shared with one of my coworkers, you know, my prayer life isn't just me and God, but I actually pray for my patients, or, or I ask my patients if I could pray for them. And that other person was like, I never thought about it like that. My prayer life is just me and God, but I never thought to pray for others. And there are people out there that may not have that true understanding that you do have the boldness and you do have the ability to pray for others. And, and Jeannie was like, I really don't know why I kind of like shared at that moment but then it all made sense to me because I got a text message from her. And she said that she, she said that her coworker said there was somebody that came in at the very end of the day 
and they had a really tough story. And that coworker of Jeannie said that she asked to pray for that person. And it, and it was game changer. And that person actually had a really, really tough Easter. Let's just leave it like that. Had a really tough Easter. And the fact that Jeannie's coworker was able to pray for somebody or, or pray for that patient, it was what I would say just a touch of God for that person at that moment. And you never know the, if your boldness would rub off on somebody else. But I'll tell you this, why not just give it a shot though? Why be afraid to be bold about Christ? You never know how it can change. You never know what it can do for somebody else's life. The very last thing that I wanna share that I think is so important is this, is number, one, is number three, trust the advocate. I love this scripture so much and I share this scripture all the time. It's from John 15, verse 26. It says, but I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. That, that, That scripture is so important for you to remember. Yeah, Jesus is in, is in heaven, but he left us somebody that we can count on every day. I don't know where I would be without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I don't know where I would be without my relationship that I have with the Holy Spirit. And when I say my relationship with the Holy Spirit, and, and actually I spoke with one of my students, so how do you talk to the Holy Spirit? How do you, I said, how are you talking to me right now? Do it just like that. Is it weird though? No, just try it, just try it. I sit in my car and people may think, maybe I'm on Bluetooth talking, but I'm just talking to the Holy Spirit who's in the car with me. Holy Spirit, just give me favor and speak through me today as I go to work or as I go to see Jeannie Help me to be an encouragement to her today, Lord. Holy Spirit, give me the right words to say. And when I meet somebody for the first time and the, if they ask me for prayer or if they start talking to, if they start asking me about God or, or why I'm a pastor or what made me want to become a pastor, Holy Spirit, I, as, as they're talking to me, I just say to, my, say to my spirit, lead and guide me. Help me to say the right things, Holy Spirit. Give me boldness to, to declare and speak about you. Every time, without a fail, he's always there. And the right words always come out of my mouth. But I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. You know, there's a version that, that says, it will remind you of all the things that I've taught you. And this was Jesus talking to disciples, telling them, reminder, hey, 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 don't worry, I, I, I know, I, I, I know, I know. I know you feel like you're gonna lose me. I know, I know you feel like all your hope is, I know, but don't worry. I've got, I got a plan and this plan actually is gonna be awesome. And I tell my students this all the time. They're like, well, what does it mean to be a, a spirit-filled Christian? I said, start reading from the book of Acts and see what it's like for the disciples. It changed their life forever. Began to speak boldly and pray for people boldly and healing and, and, and things would happen. And, and they know the stories because I've been sharing with them over and over because the important thing about it is this, is many of us are like, I don't know what it looks like to be a spirit-filled Christian. I don't know. I said, well, how do you not know? Read the book of Acts. How do you not know? I haven't read the book of Acts. Okay, read it. And then you'll know. It's one of the crazy things too is you can see the conversations that they have with the Holy Spirit. Just talking to the Holy Spirit. And it's a reminder to me that even the things that you don't know, God already had a plan for it, and it's in the Bible. There's already a blueprint of life for you. Trust the advocate. Trust that God's plan for your life, he's got everything covered. There's not one bit of your life that God doesn't know yet. There's not one bit of your life that he hasn't already prepared you for. This morning with this message in itself, it's a reminder for you to, to, to one, understand the weight or understand the power behind his name. And number two, it's okay to not have it all together, but we gotta move forward. We gotta press forward towards the goal. Don't allow the things that you've been set free from to hold you back. God's already forgiven you for those things. And he's already actually made a door for you to get out of those situations. Just speak to him. 
allow him to be a part of your life. How, how, Pastor Sam? Well, get a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I don't know what that's like. I don't know how to do that. Open your mouth. Speak to him. But, but, but what do I say? But what would you say to me if you were in need or if you were in trouble? I need help. I, I need somebody here right now. And that's how I have my conversations. Holy Spirit, I need help right now. I need you to be here right now. Or how do you pray for people that need healing? I, I, I just don't know where to start. I, I, don't, I don't know where. Well, one, it starts with boldness. Have boldness in your heart, knowing that your God that you serve has healed many people. We've read it in the Bible that healing has happened many times. So if he has that power and, and he is living inside of us, that resurrection power is inside of us, we can do that too. Be an extension of Christ, be an extension of his hand and declare with your words, declare his name over people's bodies that need healing. In Jesus' name, in his powerful name, be healed, be restored. It was crazy because I, 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 you know, on Easter, Easter day, I preached the message that I preached and, you know, I, I walked off from here to just that front chair. And I just remember just having a conversation with the Holy Spirit just right there. I was like, man, Holy Spirit, if that message didn't touch anybody, it wrecked me because I'm a mess right now. And I really just felt the Holy Spirit say, from here to that chair, I, I, won't, I kid you not, I'm so proud of you. Keep speaking with boldness. I was having my moment with, with God. I was, I, I, I was just speaking to him, speaking to him, and then somebody came up to the front. And I, 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 I was just in that moment with God. And I looked at that person. And I said, you caught me at a really vulnerable moment right now. I'm speaking to God right now. But I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to share to you what he's sharing to me. And I said, I, I usually don't do this, but I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me to do this. I started to share with this person that was standing right there. I started to share with them all these things, and I could see that, that the Holy Spirit was speaking to them, that the words that he was giving me was also for them. And then, the, and then I asked them, like, well, what is it that you actually need prayer for, though? No, no words really came out, and then, and then they said something to me that I was like, yeah, I know. I got you, God. It was instantly. I was like, God, I got you. I know exactly what you're trying to say. The words that came out of her mouth, she said, I'm dealing with infertility. I said, maybe she hasn't been in church enough to hear my story. But I said, God, I understand what you're trying to do. This is my chance. I got it. I said, maybe God has brought you to this church for, for this reason. And I said, my wife and I are actually dealing with infertility. And I could see in her eyes like, oh my goodness, somebody actually understands me. I said, I know it's not easy. I know that it's tough to want to trust in God and, and yet you haven't seen it. But I'll tell you this, in his time, it's going to happen. And she said to me, I, I could pray to Buddha for a baby. I, I could pray to other gods, for, and I, but I want to believe in God that he's going to do it. And I said, because you know the right thing, you know that you've tasted and experienced God before, that you trust and believe him, and only he could do it. And, and, and I told her, I said, I, you probably haven't been to my message before where I talked about this, but maybe this is why God has brought you because he's trying to show you that, look, there's somebody that's going through it just like you. And I shared exactly this message because that was the week before that I spoke this message to the small group. And I said, but we got to continue to press forward. Even though we don't have it all together, even though our minds may not think that we, we, we can trust and believe in God, continue to press forward because I tell you this, every single time, time and time again, his perfect timing is always the right timing. And, and I share with her and I begin to share with her. And it was pretty cool because I got a message from that person and uh, they said that they wanted to be baptized at our church. It was pretty cool. I got an email from them. And I was just like taken back because you just don't know the difference that you can make in people's life when you're bold about speaking Jesus' name. And when you understand that your life is transformed and you share with others, they can't deny it. Because somebody who is transformed and somebody who has experienced 
and understand the good news, it sounds really good to them too. As long as you can truly understand with all of your heart how good it is for us to serve a God who still does miracles, who still speaks to us, who still moves mountains for us, who still is there for us. When you can share with them that they're not alone, they'll never be alone. And you understand that from your perspective and you're sharing that to them, they're gonna want what you have. But only if you understand the transformation, the resurrection transformation that you have in your life. To not be the same anymore, to not just have another Easter go by and just be like, yeah, he is risen but really understand what it means that he is risen. Really understand what it means that we serve a living God, not just one in the books, but a living God. Someone that we can call on to be there for us and he's actually there for us. It's crazy, this past week, I was, I woke up and it was like one of those mornings where I, I woke up and I told myself, just get up. It was like seven in the morning, just get up. And I just laid in bed and I was like, oh, it's so hard to get up right now. I just closed my eyes for a little bit. And then before I could close my eyes, I, I literally felt the Holy Spirit just prompting my heart. There's somebody you need to pray for right now. I was like, okay, who is it? And I started to see this person uh, just like, flash thoughts, just like I, I saw them. And I was like, oh, let me just pray for them. Let's just pray for them. And I reached out to this person and I, and I said, I know this is weird, but God put you on my heart this, this week to pray for you. I don't know if what I'm about to say makes any sense, but I just wanna put it out there and know that God is thinking about you because he put you on my heart to pray for you specifically. And that person like, they reached back out to me and they said, oh, what you were, or, or what they said, the things that God was telling you to pray for, it's gonna happen in due time for us. I believe it. And I said, oh, okay, cool. But then it opened up the door for them to just begin to just speak to me about God. They just, just started speaking to me about God over and over and they're just saying it. And at the very end of the text message, they're like, I'm so sorry that I'm just going off. But the only person I have to talk to about God really is just my wife. I said, God, I know what you're doing. And I said, look, man, I'm always here for you. I think that's why God connected me with you, honestly, in the first time that I ever met you that God knew that you needed a brother to be there to sharpen you up or for you to sharpen me up. And I began to share my story about, you know, sharing about God or sharing about my life in the business place. And, and I actually was encouraging that person because he does a really good job at it and he's pretty famous. And I said, could you continue to be who God has called you to be in this workplace? And, and it's crazy because in the line of work that he does, he actually gets people to share their testimony without them knowing they're sharing a testimony. And they may not believe in God, but he always redirects it without them really knowing, which is pretty awesome. I, I just encourage them, like, dude, just continue being a light because it's awesome the way that you do it. The way that you effort, effortlessly are able to share Christ or be a light in this dark place. And I said, I think it's crazy because you understand, and I know I understand, but how can we get the world to understand? that being a light in this world actually just means being who God created you to be in every aspect of your life. And, and maybe you have a different job and you're like, I, I don't know how to be, just be yourself who God created you to be. Be a light in a dark place. Oh, I don't know how to do that. I'll tell you this, if you can read in the Bible and you can see how Jesus, when he stepped into a place that was filled with darkness or into a place that needed light, he was that. And he was that by just being himself. He just walked over and he spoke to people, those who didn't get the opportunity to be even looked at in this world, he gave them a chance. Those who were hurting, those who were mourning, those who were crying, he was there for them. He was support, he was, he was a friend, he was a leader, a teacher. And all of these things are instilled in us now because we have the DNA of Christ in us, we are, made in his image. And that's who we can be. Church, I, I want you to be encouraged because I wanna hear testimonies. I wanna see this world changed. We talk about it all the time, being a difference in this world, changing the world. But it starts with understanding who God has created you to be first. Transformation starts here. It starts here. You can make a difference. 
I feel like the Holy Spirit is just speaking on my heart right now. That, that I think that a lot of people have gotten to the place where sharing about God is almost on the back burner now. A lot of us have been almost wrapped up in just getting through life or like just getting through the pandemic. Like we we're just trying to get through life. Like, like people were on survival mode. But I really feel like the Holy Spirit is saying is, this is our chance to show the world that even as believers, we still served our God through a pandemic, through all these things. And we still have new people coming to church. We still have people seeking and searching after God. We still have people needing God. We still have people needing the light. And it's our chance. Go and be that in the world. Don't shy away. A lamp does no good if it's covered or hidden. It doesn't produce any light but it's your chance to be bright in this world. It's your chance to be like Christ in this world. It's your chance to speak about him boldly in this world. It's your chance, do it. Have no fear, have boldness and to believe who he is, do it. That's who he is. Trisha, stand to our feet and let's pray this together. I ask that you take this moment to just reflect on what God has been doing in your life and also reflect on who it is that you can speak to about Christ. Just reflect. God's gonna show you right now and he's gonna show you how you're gonna do it. I don't have it all together. I don't, but I'm pushing forward towards a goal. My goal in life is this, I'm gonna make God proud by trying to be bold and talking to, to everyone that I can about him until the day that I see him. And I hear those words, my good and faithful servant. I just want to hear him say, good job, Sam. Good job, son, you did it. See all these people in line behind you that are coming in? Good job, Sam. And just hearing that, just saying that right now, to be able to hear those words in the future, man, it brings tear to, tears to my eyes right now. Because if you can get to a point in your life right now that all you want to do is make God proud by being who he has created you to be, like there's freedom in that. There's freedom in understanding that like God has made you specifically for who you are for such a time as this because there are people in this world that only you can reach and he knew that. Why are you the way that you are? Because God knows you needed to be the way that you are to reach out to those people, to be that light in darkness. He knew that. But God, I can't do it. I feel all alone. I can't speak about you. I don't know what to say. Don't worry, I sent you an advocate. His name's the Holy Spirit. Speak to him. He'll tell you what to do. He'll remind you of all the things that I've done and all the things that I taught. He'll remind you. Speak to him. Speak to him. Speak to him right now. This is that prayer that you'll say right now is, Holy Spirit, I need you. I know that you were sent here to help me. I need you. Be with me every day. Lead me and guide me. Teach me. Remind me of the things that Jesus has done on this world. Remind me. Remind me. Remind me. Remind me. And help me to be bold this week. Help me to share to somebody about how good you are. Lord, thank you for your resurrection power. Thank you for the transformation that we get to have in our lives. And we love you and we thank you because you are good. You are good and you are good. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, I hope you were blessed by this message. I can't wait to go and have some refreshments with you all. Go and be a blessing to somebody else.